Now, let's return to the White House in the 2000s, ran by George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney, where it's been plagued with terrorism, a war on terror, and a lot of questionable scandals that some of them might be related to Dick Cheney. Basically a present day White House, but without the lengthy shutdown. Hello, my name's Elijah Wells, and today's review is Vice. The story is, Dick, it's a biopic of the former Vice President of the United States of America, Dick Cheney, who served as Vice President to George W. Bush. During this, uh, it's about his rise to power when he was, uh, during his time, during uh, hit the, mid, the Nixon administration, and how it went through Watergate, and how his, how his close, uh, close ally, Rumfield, uh, played by Steve Steve, uh, Steve Cowell, uh, went from, oh, you, I'm going to look after you, like, I just let you know, he could be bombing Vietnam any time now, like, and of course, he went, he became, uh, he later became a briefly permanent NATO ambassador in Brussels, and later on, he became the, uh, congressional, uh, he became the congressional, dis uh, uh, Became the representative uh, for Wyoming uh, with his wife helping him campaign after he fell ill of a heart attack. Then he later come, came back to the White House. Then, of course, he became vice president. Of course, there was September 11 attack and his interest in Iraq. Uh, with jo and of course, he worked with both Bushes. And of course, the reason for the war on Iraq was oil and money. So he tried to link, uh, with help of with much of the Bush's administration, link uh, uh, the Taliban with Iraq. But here's a slight catch. The person they linked with was, uh, was one of the key terrorists for Taliban. They, uh, they said in the UN uh, Security Council saying, yep, we believe, we believe Osama bin Laden is behind us and that. And we believe this that person who later uh, went into hiding, who later created the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, more known as ISIS. Uh, of course, they did terrorist, awful terrorist attacks across Europe and Iraq and Syria and Turkey. Of course, it, did, it really did a, a movie like Fahrenheit 9/11, which really dealt with uh, the American confusion post 9/11. And how people were, re how a lot of people were really angry and just how confused they were about Taliban. Like other countries, who just bomb them already, because, ev because uh, countries like uh, France, Germany, France and Germany and Israel just said no, we're not doing the war on terror because it would dis destabilize peace in the Middle East. Of course, I bet I better talk about. I I don't want to brag too much about the story, but. The story the acting of Christian Bale, Sam Rockwell, and Amy Adams is brilliant. The writing of Adam McKay, although uh, uh, Adam McKay, like his previous movie, The Big Shorts, right there, uh, it loves to treat his audience like they're idiots by explaining just what happens. Uh, just explaining, like if you get if you get confused, like what? It just explains it to you, like oh. This happens. Then it, of course, breaks the fourth wall by inserting the credits midway through the film. Like, ah, oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Was that a scene where he where he meets with George W. Bush and, and he eats chicken? The trailer. Oh wait. <laughs> That's back on track. Of course, Christian Bale gained a lot of pounds. Uh, gained a lot of weight during this role. Uh, pretty much knowing that uh, he had two. Knowing that Dick Cheney had two heart attacks in the film. One being. Uh, when he was uh, the election for representative for Wyoming, and one when he was uh, in Washington, like, mm, I'm having a heart attack, you idiot. I think uh, we'll get. I think the movie gets a lot more. Lot. I think the char the character of Dick Cheney gets a lot more, more, more uh, demonic as it goes on because each uh, each decision he makes, the longer the movie goes on, the more reckless it got. Like the like what I said earlier, his decision to evade Iraq uh, and trying to and him unsuccessfully linking the terrorist uh, to one in Taliban, to one in Af one in Taliban Afghanistan, to one in Iraq, thus cre creating a much more big, bigger friction, bigger friction uh, uh, within the conundrum known as the Middle East. And like I said, the acting is amazing, the writing is brilliant. 
And of course, uh, the scene where September 11 happened, uh, and he and Dick Cheney's in a bunker, it happens in both the, op in the opening scene. It's just it was shot like it was a British drama with all the shaky cameras and everyone being, everyone panic and confused. Like, uh, but I feel like uh, it was so claustrophobic, so panicky. Just uh, what gives off the vibes of this uh, British drama uh, shooting, like uh, uh, wiggly, uh, like uh, shaky cameras and just very quick editing. All in all, brilliant, brilliant movie, great acting, great writing, and a, a script that isn't afraid to p poke fun at itself and admit to itself, America has pretty much uh, become more, more of a damned state afterwards. Or, and of course, with the Trump administration and the ongoing shutdown, which might see, which, which has an end on site with a temporary deal that only lasts for like more than a month. All in all, I think this was another brilliant film by Adam McKee, who did Big Shaw and the Anchorman films. I recommend this movie film to you, and it's an AR10, and this is the Light Worlds, and bye!